And so, like in your marriage and your relationships, you got to tell people what you're thinking. You don't have to assume you're right. That's a whole different story because you're not, because you're you know ignorant and you're biased and you know. So you're not right, but you can stumble towards your this the expression of yourself, and then you can listen to the other person and hope that they tell you some way that you're stupid that's useful so you can be a little less stupid in the future because that, wouldn't that be good and so you know you go after the unknown you don't protect what you know you already know what you know you go after what you don't know that's why you have to talk to people you don't agree with that's why you have to talk to your enemies because they're going to tell you things you don't know you could even listen to them it's possible they know a thing or two you don't know but people don't like that, you know, they just talk to people who think the same way and then they just stay stupid and so that's, and that's not good because if you're not wise, the world will wallop you, it'll flatten you and, and far more than it has to and then you'll be bitter and resentful and you'll be part of that force that wallops instead of the force that fights against that so, well, so you go after the dragon and that's what, that's what this guy is doing, he's going after the dragon it's, it's threatening the society, because it always does, chaos, what's outside of order always threatens order, always, always. And so, you have to step forward, you know, in this manner, voluntarily, and, 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 and go after that when it's still manageable, right? And that's the case in your own life, too, so, you know, if, you're, if you've had a proclivity to be bullied in the past, you know, and you want to get out of that, what you have to do is you have to make yourself awake to the to the, to the, to the, what would you say, to the, to the initial stages of that sort of bullying emerging in your life again, that sort of domination, and you have to step forward against it when it's still in its developing stages, because maybe you can just not have it happen, that would be better, and so you have to be ready to speak what you have to say, more or less on a moment's notice, you, you can't be impulsive about it, you know, like, if you and I are talking and you make a mistake, or I make a mistake, even if it bothers one or the other of us, we should just write it off because it's like one encounter, what the hell, you, you know, maybe we had a bad night's sleep or something, you know, you, so you've got to be a little forgiving, and, but if it happens twice, then, you know, you should be a little awake and you should remember both times, and then if it happens a third time, it's like, that's when you, that's when you act and you say, look, we talked and this happened, and I thought, yeah, whatever, and th but then you did it again, and then you just did it again, well then the person is basically like, what are they going to do, you know? No, well maybe, they might argue with you, but you kind of got them. And ge generally, if you just point that out to people, just like that, just that you noticed and are willing to say something about it, they'll back the hell off, they'll often apologize. And sometimes you even make them a little more conscious, which is like, hey, that's not such a bad idea. And that's what all this means, and so this, ca this chaos idea, it's, so for Jung, it was the unconscious, right? It was the contents of your unconscious. And so that might be the unknown past, the threatening past that you have never dealt with. <clears throat> might be the threatening future. It might be the threatening present. But Jung realized as, his, as he got older that, that the unconscious was also the world. And you think, and so the chaos is not only your unconscious mind, which meets the unknown, but it's actually the unknown itself mingled together. And you think, what the hell does that part? That's why the dragon is a land creature and an air creature. It's matter and spirit at the same time. And this sort of gets us into constructivism. Because the constructivists think that basically what happens is that you encounter those elements of the world that don't fit into your theory. And out of those new elements, you make the world through your perceptions. And you make yourself by incorporating the information and transforming yourself. And that's how Piaget explains the development of a child. The child starts out with some reflexes, basic reflexes, and manifesting the reflexes produces results in the world, and then the child has to reorganize its perceptions to take into account the transformations, and so then it, it gets a little more sophisticated, and then it can do a few more things, and then it can manifest more changes in the world, and then it, mod it, it tracks them and modifies its perceptions and actions to account for them, and it just keeps doing that, and that's how the child boots itself up, like a computer does.